Hi, and welcome to the BDU Podcast. My name is Kyle David Bates, and we are here live at EMS Expo in uh, New Orleans this year. Uh, we are here at the Physio Control Podcast booth uh, with um, Otho and, and Jason from Rapid uh, Deployment Products uh, to talk about some unique products for the pediatric in- environment. So guys, welcome. Thank you for coming today. Thanks, Thank Kyle. for having us. So when we talk pediatrics, we always say that uh, we need specialized equipment. I mean, back in my days when we got into EMS, we took the old Hope Resuscitator, took the mask, turned it around upside down, and used the adult bag valve mask for that. And we're starting to see that we need to have specialized equipment for that. And when I was over at your booth, I noticed that you guys had some, well, I call them vents, but you actually corrected me on that, right? They're yeah, vents. they're ma- manual resuscitators. They're manual resuscitators. And now, what's the difference between a manual resuscitator and a vent? Well, thanks, Kyle, for uh, again having us here. Um, the difference between a manual resuscitator and a uh, ventilator is uh, the ventilator is a little bit more complicated and you can set volumes as well as pressures. A manual resuscitator is, is basically a very simple device. It's a pressure control device uh, that we've developed for both uh, neonatal and pediatric adult populations. And what we do is we very precisely um, inflate the lungs to a very precise pressure. So um, this is a TP circuit here. There is a constant flow through the device. And what we do is we uh, occlude the, uh, the circuit and then we adjust the, the pressure to about 18 centimeters for babies. Okay, I, so I have to ask you a question here. I grew up in the days where we had the, 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 the positive pressure ventilators. I mean, you know, the firemen love these things. They get down there, you know, and the toes would, would go up like this on that. And we got away from those because we we're causing a lot of uh, barrel trauma. We we're causing a lot of, of, of injuries and overinflation of those. Is this we're getting into or? Well, no, there's been some advancements in, in terms of the, the type of valving and fluidic devices that are used in these manual resuscitators. And essentially, because babies' lungs are, are very, very, very fragile, we've got very large valves in here, so they pop off right at 18 centimeters or 20 centimeters, wherever you set them. So what it does is it will inflate the lungs to that pressure and no more. So that eliminates a uh, barrel trauma. So now, I like to feel compliance. You know, I got that bag valve in my, in my hand, I'd be able to feel compliance, but you can't with the, the positive pressure. Well, that's, uh, that's true. That's one concern people have. But what's interesting is there's been a number of studies at, hop- at uh, hospitals like at Johns Hopkins where they show that uh, if you totally occlude a bag valve and mass system so that there is, you know, essentially 100% compliance, then you actually can't feel that versus an open circuit. So the human hand actually isn't sensitive enough to detect these very small changes in pressure. I mean, we're only talking 18 centimeters of water here, and it's just impossible for, uh, even for trained people, to really feel those differences. So it's going to be much more accurate in terms of volume delivery. Yes. It's going to be safer because it's going to prevent the barrel trauma, and it's going to be more sensitive than what our hands are doing. Correct, and uh, it allows um, more nurses and EMTs and others to deliver uh, effective breaths without the technique-driven uh, bag that we see. The, the waveform in a bag is triangular. Uh, the waveform here is actually just like a ventilator, so it's more of a square wave in terms of the pressure flow characteristics. So it's, it's, it's more of a, a, a consistent, consistency is really what, what we're looking at here Absolutely. in terms of, of this. Now, how much is, does that weigh? Uh, this only weighs about two and a half pounds, and uh, it's made out of uh, light die cast aluminum, so uh, I want to say it's almost indestructible. But uh, <laughs> it, it, so it, will sur- it'll, it's, it survives in the hospital uh, market very well, and we feel it's going to do very well in the, the BLS, ALS space as well. Excellent. Excellent. You brought some other products here as, as well. Uh, the, the adult? Yes. <coughs> yep. Uh, again, uh, a lot of our customers, at least in the hospital space, like uh, Johns Hopkins, said, hey, uh, we're doing such a great job uh, resuscitating infants. What can we do for, uh, for adults? So uh, we developed a device called a Spira, which is breathe in, in Italian. And it's the first device that actually uh, includes both a resuscitation uh, and CPAP device in one unit. So both the, the uh, equipment is a resuscitator and CPAP, and the disposable is the first of its kind. It's a non-rebreather anti-suffocation valve. So you can deliver uh, both CPAP as well as rescue breaths with this. Excellent. And of course, in the background here, we, we've got the good old PD light. 
The PD light. Right, which is good for a pediatric patient up to 60 pounds. Okay. So. Uh, well, are we starting to see more and more or people look towards specific, uh, specialized pediatric equipment? We are. Um, we're starting to actually see where it's actually used to be kind of just the hospital-based systems, but you're actually starting to see more uh, where your, your civilian-based EMS is starting to be more conscious about age-specific, group-specific care. And uh, so we're starting to see sales increase in those areas, um, which is obviously great for us. But uh, Excellent. <laughs> yeah, because we, we, we just talked about uh, you know, spinal motion you know, restriction is, is, is kind of controversial right now but it's not fully out of it but if you're gonna do it you gotta do it right exactly and putting a small child on a big board you gotta make alterations in that board where you're carrying a uh, pediatric specific you, you, you got to do small alterations but not as much right I mean that's that's one of the things about the product is that it, it does it's you know it's, it's designed specifically for that patient you know and um, you know, you're not trying to trying to, to adjust the straps up, or is there's not designed for like that. It's not an adult spine board, so this this is specific for that project and uh, that care process. <laughs> anyway, it's <laughs> it's a good stuff. You know, I hate this stuff. <laughs> so. Well, we, we appreciate it, Jason. Also, thank you very much for coming yep. out. Thank you so much, Jason from from uh, Rapid Deployment Products, uh, and we will be right back. Thanks, Kyle.